Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we are coming close to the end, uh, the end of our church year. Uh, at the very end, we see kind of these triumphal pericopes, but as we're kind of getting nearer, uh, in some ways our texts have been a little bit more ominous, uh, a little bit more dark. Uh, and here we also see the life of Paul. Uh, it is coming to an end. In a lot of ways, we like to think of Paul as one who is charging forth, one who is full of vigor, one who is bold uh, for the Lord. But he is coming towards the end of his life. And indeed, he says, uh, I am already being poured out as a drink offering. And the time of my departure has come. Uh, way back when our Lord called Paul, uh, he said, I'm going to show him how much he must suffer for my name. And Paul uh, has spent many a years, yes, boldly charging forth, but also suffering, suffering much uh, for the Lord. Uh, he recounts in 2 Corinthians all the things that he un underwent, uh, the lashings, the beatings with rods, uh, three shipwrecks, uh, stoning, um, being bitten by a snake, right? Uh, all those things as he travels for God, uh, he has indeed suffered much. And now towards the end, you kind of get a, a little bit of tiredness that is there. Uh, yet he says these words, and these are incredibly bold and confident. Uh, yet at the end of his time, he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Uh, sometimes this will come up as a confirmation verse. Uh, sometimes we'll hear this at, at, at a funeral. Uh, yet in some senses, whenever we hear these words, there's probably a tinge of us that uh, it just doesn't quite sit right either. It's that first person singular verb that in some ways doesn't, and this is maybe our Lutheran sensitivities, right? Uh, I, right? I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. <laughs> well, where's the sola de gloria, Paul? <laughs> um, uh, you've done this even Evangelicals, like Os, uh, Oswald Chambers says, it is a shameful thing for a Christian to talk about getting the victory. What is Paul doing here? Or maybe in some senses it's just the fact that uh, if I turn the mirror on myself a little bit, uh, I just don't feel like I can have that same confidence that Paul has had. When I go about uh, facing the responsibilities that God has placed upon me, yes, in my vocation as a pastor, but probably even more so as a husband, as a father, uh, a, a, a member of our community, the things that God would have me do for his kingdom and the direction he would guide my life. And if I shine the mirror on myself a little bit, I don't know that I can say the words that Paul says. My... First person singular verbs might be more like, I have cowered at the challenge. I have quit the race. I've compromised the faith. How about you? Where are your first person singular verbs? Do we have the same confidence that Paul has? And I don't know that I've suffered anything in comparison. They don't quite sit right in some ways. And we have a tendency in some senses, I think, to fight the wrong fight. I think that's part of it, right? Uh, we want to justify ourselves. We want to establish ourselves. Uh, we aren't going the, the direction that our Lord guides us. Uh, Jesus says, Paul, you must suffer for my name. And oftentimes my suffering is because I'm going my own way, my own direction. Establishing myself in this world. I think that's often what captivates our lives and what we head towards. What are your first person singular verbs? Um, this week uh, I received a phone call, and uh, it's maybe safe to use this because it's none of you, right? Um, it's someone from a church out there, right? And you guys would never do this, right? But uh, it was someone that 
uh, ultimately, I think, was pretty frustrated with her pastor. She wasn't going to talk to her pastor. She was calling us, and uh, you don't need to know the details why she called us, but uh, she was calling us, and uh, specifically, the pastor was dealing with some things related to confirmation and was working towards some changes, (laughs) And rather than recognizing her pastor actually lives and breathes this type of thing <laughs> and, and is trying to really work towards some positive thing for the life of educating kids, uh, she's standing a little bit more in a place of resistance. We don't like change, maybe. But maybe actually the root of it was this, uh, that she was a grandma. She's a grandma, and by golly, she sure hopes her kids or her grandkids are going to get what? Confirmed. And if her grandkids get confirmed, then in some senses she can justify and feel good about a situation when in all actuality, the pastor's trying to address the issue that we're seeing all the time, and the reality is, no, she actually probably needs to go talk to her kids. Because somewhere along the line, we've given up the fight. We've stopped running the race. (laughs) And the faith isn't being kept. And so all too often, we want to maybe self-justify ourselves. And we don't want to turn the mirror on ourselves and realize... The places we cower, the places we quit, the places we compromise, it's easier to blame someone else or something else than to come and be honest about our need for Jesus. See, Paul in this lesson, as he talks about these first person singular verbs of I have fought, I have finished, I have kept, right? This is the exact same Paul that says, Lord, please remove this thorn from my flesh. And God tells him that his grace is made perfect in weakness. This is the same Paul that calls himself the chief of sinners, Right? This is the exact same Paul uh, that maybe kind of leads us in that opening hymn that we have, right? Just as I am, I come. And so, yes, Paul stands with confidence, but he's the same Paul that stands on confidence that comes from Jesus Christ. Our text ends today with these words. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me. Paul was weak. He actually was pretty weak at times. I mean, we think of him as as such a bold man, right? But um, at many times, he stood in weakness. He says, all deserted me. And copying his Lord, he says, words may it not be charged against them. (laughs) But the Lord stood by me. The Lord strengthened me. So that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued. Do do you see it's not first person singular? (laughs) Right? Um, I was... It's a passive, right? I was rescued from the lion's mouth. And the Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. And so Paul can stand there with confidence because he's already been rescued. (laughs) Because Jesus has already come to him. And we gather here today, yes, with the mirror pointed at us. Our first person singulars aren't always too good. (laughs) And we come to our Lord and we say, my fault, my own fault, my most grievous fault. (laughs) 
And we hear our Lord grant us abundant grace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ. He gives us his very body and blood. He reminds us the new life that we've been raised. See, Paul, uh, he had an amazing conversion, yes, on the road to Damascus. But he also talks about his conversion and his baptism where he has died to himself and been raised in the grace and the mercy and the joy and the new life of Christ. And that's what God offers you today. He offers you that amazing grace so that you can go out and like Paul, we don't have to be queasy about it. Uh, We can say, I'm going to get about the fight. To the very last, to the very end, I can step into the responsibilities that God has placed upon me because I don't stand there on my own strength. I can stand there on my Lord Jesus Christ. And I can fight the good faith, fight. And maybe, maybe you've not been fighting for a little while. But Jesus comes to you and says, stand on my grace and get about the fight. Finish the course. Hold fast to your faith in me and share the love of God. Uh, he talks right about the, uh, the gospel being proclaimed to all the Gentiles. May the gospel be proclaimed to your family, to your community, to uh, wherever God places you. Finish the course, hold fast to the faith. We don't have to worry about those words, right? Because we have a Lord Jesus Christ who has rescued us and he has promised. Not a crown we've earned, a crown that he has earned. And we hold fast to him and he has promised in the end a crown of righteousness that that righteous judge will give you on that day. We can stand in Jesus and indeed say, I fight the good fight. I finish the course. I hold on to the faith. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.